This episode of Stoked brought to you by FreshBooks.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Stoked, the ultimate Star Trek online podcast. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Yo, J-Man. Hi, Chris. Good to have you back on Stoked. Thanks. Not that you're ever really gone, no, but it's I just nice was. to be back. I'm always here. I tell you, J-Man, we actually, like, about four days ago or so, or maybe a little more, we're like, boy, we're not going to have a very big show this week. herp a derp a der Nope. Boy, did that change. We've got a yeah. mega episode for you this week. Obviously, the big story is Atari and Cryptic and mm-hmm. their eventual divorce. Yep. Their in-process divorce. But <laughs> that's not the only thing we're going to cover. We've actually got some interesting news items that we're going to dig through. Mm-hmm. And then in our Tactic of You segment, we got on Tribble and we played the new remastered episodes. Yep, the new Diplomatic Orders, which is Pajem, and the Doomsday Device from Imaga. That- yeah. Whoa, we got stuff to talk about. We got thoughts on that. And then yeah. in Community Feedback, we've got a whole new question which we need your help on because we've got an upcoming interview mm-hmm. and we're going to ask them the questions that you submit. But stay tuned for that. You know, another thing that came out this week, other than the big news about Atari, obviously, was the new engineering report, right? Yeah, we're all yeah. really excited to see nothing new. Yeah, it was kind of a snore. Yeah. A little bit of a snore. I mean, I guess, actually, that was one of the things that somebody brought up in the forum is like, hey, why isn't there much in here about you know new features or mm-hmm. the, some of the technology you're working on? Interestingly enough, the response from Dan Stahl, um, first of all, he came out and said, well, I'll tell you, but it's very unsexy in, in his approximate wording. So he's going to tell us about the dirty bits? Right. Uh, turned out to be totally fascinating. I don't know about well, you guys, but... Uh, yeah, <laughs> we think it's uh, really the, some of the most interesting details yet. And I think it's funny that Plus, I don't... It's total awesome Trek techno babble, reversing uh, tachyon pulses all over the place. Kind of. My, <laughs> I think it was actually called micro patching and animation sequencing. Right, right. <laughs> uh, which just sounds like it's cool stuff. Uh, the other thing that uh, he mentioned is uh, some DirectX 11 improvements in support. Possible. His yeah. word, his wording was fingers crossed, but it yeah. does sound like it could be a part of the upcoming. I don't know if it's me because I'm just kind of a tech guy, but I love hearing about some of this inter- interesting technology that they are implementing on the back end, like micro patching. Mm-hmm. It sounds like on on demand patching as you go. Well, and the partitioning is apparently a way to make crowded maps load faster and kind of stream in the the mm. content as you're going so through only maybe certain partitions load until they're needed. exactly huh right and maybe they don't always share those details because that could be considered some competitive advantage stuff. Mm-hmm. but i love that we actually got some of that stuff. right I now the know. whole the whole reason this came up in discussion about season four is because season four turns out to be you know cryptic does several projects they've got champions they've got stow they've got neverwinter and the rumors are that there's one more out there floating around that they're working on Jeez. and all of these different projects are actually have their own branches of the central cryptic engine Right, code. Right. Well, they've flagged season four as a place where all the code will come together and this will be the new version, the official version of the cryptic engine code. Wow. And everything will then start branching out again from there. Epic. So that's why all of this technology is being worked on on the back end. I wonder if that implies some of the ground changes and some of the uh, improvements in this response time and things like that they've talked about will make it into champions. I have a feeling that that's why we're seeing the ground combat at this time and why we're seeing the code come together is because this is just a fundamental shift. You know, the the responsiveness of the UI and everything like Mm -hmm, that, those mm -hmm. sound like real back-end kind of things that Mm -hmm. every one of these titles that Cryptic is working on Mm -hmm. would would benefit from. And if you could implement some sort of back-end micro-patching where you can patch on the fly kind of stuff, why wouldn't you want all of your titles to be able to support that? Yeah, right. And that's that's the advantage of doing something like this. I mean, mm-hmm. that's really the core reason why you invest heavily in a one engine because that engine brings up rising tide. All ships they go up. Jamie. Well, and we already know is kind of a side thing is that a lot of the foundry improvements we're getting is because the foundry is driving Neverwinter production to a mm-hmm. large extent. So Neverwinter improves the foundry, we get to benefit from right. that. Right. Uh, All right, so why don't we uh, shift gears and talk a little bit about uh, something that's coming up for the folks who missed the double XP weekend or whatever it was Mm -hmm. with Q. Good news is Q's coming back, and you and I both missed out. We were up at Linux Fest. Yep. So I'm going to jump in with my Klingon, I think. June 17th through the 19th. Great time to level up your KDF or any other low-level characters that you need to grind this up. Oh, also double emblem rewards if you're grinding those out. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Right. Maybe, maybe. Oh, now, see, now I'm conflicted who I'm going to play. <laughs> uh, just a quick mention also, we'll just kind of leave the details in the show notes, but also the new Peregrine Fighters are out in the sea store. Mm-hmm. I jumped in, got my quick first impressions. I'm really unimpressed. It's a shuttle. It's a shuttle. With cannons. What do you want from a shuttle? Although everybody in the chat room says don't go with cannons. But it's a shuttle with cannons, and it's small. It's very, very small. Tiny. But other than that, that's really my only impression. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm and it's also a C-Store only item at this time, so I don't think it's really anything to get all that excited about. Well, we'll see. I mean, well, that might change. I'll give you an example, J-Man, is if, if some gameplay changes come up, like some rumored stuff that we've heard mm-hmm. about special task forces. Mm-hmm. Gozer has said that they m- might be trying to put shuttle play into one of the sh- uh, special task forces. Then, then maybe that's there's a good reason to have that Paragon 5. Possibly, there. but they're they're kind of flimsy compared to shuttles. They have slightly less hull. They you know It's kind of like an escort version of a shuttle. They pack a slightly higher punch, and they... 
yeah, exactly. Blow yep. up a little easier. Exactly like an escort version of a shell. That's a good way yeah. to put it. All right. Okay. So that's the comments on the fighters. Uh, now, do you want to talk about this new prize here? Because I think it, people will probably be yes. uh, pretty inclined to go okay, get this. Later on, we're going to dedicate all of Tactical View to yeah. the new two new uh, remasters. But you guys know Stranded in Space was remastered not too long ago. A little while ago. Well, they finally got around to adding a new reward to it, and it's pretty darn cool. i got to go <laughs> run this again because the, the prize you get for rerunning the remastered version of Stranded in Space is the ability to summon Captain Brat. Yeah, which means like uh, you could it's essentially a commodities broker wherever you want. And a bank. Oh. And a mailbox. Oh, ooh, Anytime like you're that. in sector space. And if I do an, it for the bank alone. And if another player, like, so uh, let's say you're on a group of five and, and you guys all need to use the bank. One person is the only one that has to summon it. All of you can use Brat. Well, why not go get it? It's a good, fun mission. It's been remastered. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great mission anyways. That is absolutely what I'm getting. So yeah. that's neat. All right, should we move on into... Tweetly. Absolutely. And There's not a whole fans. lot this week, but no. th we got some new shots of the uh, the veteran uniforms. Rock and the metal look on them, too. They look mm -hmm. really nice. I, and I, a full lineup of what all the Jupiters look like. Yeah, yeah. And then also there was the uh, improvements of the badge again. We don't. I think these badges, I don't know, I think this is just going to be the new badge, uh, this new tech. Now that what you're done. seeing is just what they're doing to make badges better everywhere. Probably. Yeah, there's probably some new tech involved with that. Because remember when they launched the alternative future uh, badges they were having trouble with layering mm -hmm. effects and everything mm -hmm. like that that mm -hmm. was probably the the beginning works of yeah. this yeah uh, this new badge is an andorian badge and uh, since we have the we just got the vulcan badge and we have a vulcan ship and now we got the andorian badge and they're saying the andorian ship is coming down the line some point a lot of people are saying you got to give some love to the tellarites now oh because <laughs> i mean the founding Founding fathers of the Federation. I'd love here. to see a Tellarite. Uh, I'd love to see some Tellarite ship expansion. And mm -hmm. I think, although I'd, I want to get my hands on that Andorian ship, I'm really curious. Yeah. That's what I want to start seeing some leaks of. Uh, one last tweet leak is uh, another shot of San Francisco. Beautiful. Oh, boy. Oh, I mean, boy. I, I don't really have anything more to say about this nope. than awesome. I want to go there. And I guess I don't. I guess some of those shots he actually went and visited the area and took some pictures and well, got. Well, they're not far from it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're not, and he got some source, some source photos. So how the, about that? The only thing I'm slightly scared of is that they might have the scaling off. I'm, I, I think that the Golden Gate makes an incredible scenery, like far off in the distance, but I don't want to be able to walk up to it or and find out that all of a sudden it's only twenty feet tall. Huge zone is huge. Yeah, could be huge zone is huge. Uh, the chat room saying that it was Salami Inferno that went and got the reference photos. Thank you, chat room. It is handy to have that chat room, J-Man. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, they come in here and give us the, uh, the information in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, you can join them over at jblive.tv when we uh, do this live at 11 a.m. Pacific. All right. Let's cut through the crap here. Let's get to the meat of the episode. We know what everybody wants to talk about. We're right? going to try to do this justice. Now, uh, I'll be honest, though. We've tried to pull details out of everybody we know at Cryptic, and it, they're under sort of an information lockdown. And Nobody probably, really wants to talk about this. I'm sure there's only so much that they know at this point themselves. But That's true. So on Tuesday, last week that uh, Stoked came out, it was announced that uh, Atari was looking to de-invest itself from Cryptic Studios. Mm -hmm. Now, the way that works is uh, Cryptic Studios is like a sub-company of Atari, and they're sort of like the financial parents, and They've done a lot of the legal work and the publishing and all the, that kind of stuff. And blah, blah. Nobody cares about that. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> uh, and so it, it, we've covered pre previously on the show that in a lot of ways, um, Cryptic Studios was solely responsible for a large portion of Atari's revenue. It has seemed that way, yeah. But, well, that, see, they're not mutually exclusive things. You can still be, you can still be the most profitable, but mm -hmm. still losing money. Oh, yeah. And that's where Atari's at as a whole, and that's where, uh, and that's where the reality of... Uh, when you when you have a studio like Cryptic Studios, where you have a Champions Online game that was published while they were uh, as Atari, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was developed and published, and then maintained. Then you have Star Trek Online that went under development and published, and then went into a whole series of mm -hmm. very you know continued heavy development um, after launch. And then you have uh, them working on Neverwinter's Night, mm -hmm. which and is not published, and therefore technically a money sink and this and this foundry technology is um that they're you know primarily developing under the budget line of this project is 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 extremely extremely r&d heavy mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of code a lot of developers a lot of high-end people are probably working on this kind of stuff yeah so these are a lot of um high cost things that are happening at the same time atari is just struggling financially despite that let me quote the numbers that a lot of people have been throwing around here Previous year's loss was 17 point something million dollars. Now, are these in euros or is, have you... This is, this is dollars. Okay. And this year's loss for the last 12 months prior to this financial statement that came out earlier this week was only $7 million. So now, I realize that losing $7 million sounds like a lot. But it's still a $10 million improvement. Exactly. Yeah. Now, forecast another year, if they manage to even improve by only half that much, they're only $2 right. million in the hole. If they'd managed to make the whole $10 million again in the next year, then they're actually in the black. 
Right. I mean, I honestly, I think this is a terrible move by Atari. <laughs> well, the the uh, I'll, I'll tell you why I think you're right in terms of long term st- uh, strategy for them. Mm-hmm. But I also think it's a better thing for Star Trek Online overall. Um, I agree. Here's a couple of things. If you look at the and we have a link in the show notes, uh, the public the public financial report. It's a lot of business speak you have to go through, but it's available yeah. online and you can read it. And mm-hmm. we did. And uh, but one of the things that they say in there is just very simply put that they just can't afford to do this research and development investment and that they have to focus on mobile games and social games to an extent that aren't they downsizing uh, a studio and yeah atari owns another studio that made i think it was test drive unlimited too or yeah, something eden like studios? that eden studios yeah. is actually being downsized from 80 people to 30 30 to 30 yeah 50 people are losing their jobs yeah through this financial restructuring. And then they're going to try to get those people to focus on things like Facebook games and mm-hmm. mobile games. Now, of course, people at Eden Studios are devastated. They're actually on strike to prevent themselves from being fired, but that's a whole other story. I'm, yeah. But an, another thing to note is it could be a lot worse for Cryptic right now. Atari could have decided to gut them. Well, so Atari has also said that one of the things they're going to try to do to make money is they're going to try to license their old IP to third parties. So mm-hmm. a lot of the old Atari properties will get licensed out, and who knows where that will go. But one of the things you have to consider is if you have Atari who's trying to focus on these social games, and they specifically call out um, in in their uh, financial report that their, uh, their, their goal here is to lower investment requirements for the future products in their product pipeline and reduce research and development investments. That's not Cryptic Studios. Cryptic Studios is developing on a lot of titles where there's some R&D going into, especially the yeah. Foundry stuff. So you don't want that company whose focus is on let's just go with copying easy easy to play games where they also specifically say that casual online and mobile games can are better used with external development and creates more flexibility for them. So they want to outsource their development. They don't want to be in charge or have or have to absorb the risk of any high budget. See, they they are mistaken, and this is just this is just now me spitballing. But I believe they they see the mobile market and the Facebook market as really easy to produce low cost games they're not entirely off the mark on that but isn't that going to change as those platforms become more mature and there's more competition mm-hmm. the same thing that it was in pc games i mean if you look at what it took to make a pc game in 1983 totally you know, you know it's just the same thing so all they're doing is getting a short-term investment in a platform that's eventually going to develop into a business that's going to have the same requirements you know I, this might come out as just being kind of a jerk on my part but i think atari has never been a long-term People, they've never looked at the big picture. Well, this isn't the they've Atari never, that we used to have and know. This no, is, it's Infogrames. Yeah, technically, and they, they just, just resurrected the Atari logo right. and slapped it on their face right. to to hide the fact that they were another company. Yeah, um, they've never been a long term company. They've never looked at the big picture, and they've always been every single major decision that they've been made. Do you give an example? Because that's a pretty big statement. I'm just taking saying. the Atari logo. Infogrames was on the way out. It was never. It wasn't publishing anything new. They had to absorb Microprose just to keep themselves afloat okay which brought with it a bunch of like civilization and yep. xcom and, right. and those ips and stuff like that and then they rebranded themselves as atari to again just try to stay afloat to to hide their former right. reputation right every big move that they've made has just been them trying to make a buck well of course it is and that's you know and that's all brought out more to light in these in these uh, you know all these companies really want to make a buck but you what you hope is that they want to make a buck by having fun making an awesome product not just to make a buck in the name of making a buck. So I would say if that's how a company, if that's the company's culture and that's how they, you know, if they don't value their their own IP and they don't value that kind of stuff, then that's not really who you want at the top of Stowe. Yeah. For the game itself, you don't want that underneath there. Now, the thing is, that leaves a scary picture for Cryptic. Where do they go? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, really, it seems to be pretty hard to do this kind of game independently. I mean, when I say game, I mean this, this marketplace. Mm-hmm. Um, but then again, they do have two established titles. They're not... You know, they're really, they're not like, uh, they're, they're past the launch phase. They're past the most expensive phase, theoretically, for both those titles. Yeah. So maybe the, maybe the situation is a little different at this point? Well, obviously, if they want to go independent at this point, they're going to have to buy themselves out of Atari, which, right. which means a couple things. First of all, they just have to buy their own studio. That's, that's the one thing. If they want to continue developing Neverwinter, though, that could be a major sticking point because Atari actually has publishing rights on D&D, the Dungeons & Dragons IP, right. for like the next five years. And do you know what the, stat, what the status is with Champions? Because I know like with Star Trek Online, I, 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 I believe don't. there's also a licensing fee that has to be paid to CBS. So both sort of have this profit leech on them. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so that's one thing. But I guess a lot so of games are like that. Yeah, it's not just buying the studio. You also have to buy all the, the, a the lot IP of games rights are like and everything. That. Like a lot of games, you know, you use an established IP sure. and you pay the owner of that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not that's not unusual, but it, gosh, it just seems super risky. Mm. Now, there has been one company that successfully pulled it off in the past, Turbine, but they had a huge investment from Warner Brothers to, to help them take that split away from Microsoft. Well, and it's been suggested in our chat room that maybe CBS would want to buy Cryptic. I don't... I don't, I don't see them as buying it, but they might take on a similar role to what Warner Brothers has done for Turbine and I, kind of be a major investor. If you would have made if you would have made that comment like two, three years ago, I would have disagreed with you and I said, No, that CBS is too old media, they don't get it. But looking at what CBS has done, you know, they've just for example, Star Trek, they've put Star Trek on their website. They mm-hmm. put Star Trek up on YouTube, they put Star Trek up on Netflix or they're putting it up there. Mm-hmm. Um, they bought CNET. Yeah. A huge to make a huge online presence. They have full time reporters that do just online reporting. So they, they are interested in the online space and I believe they, they recognize the value in keeping uh, uh you know, to them the Star Trek uh, Star Trek online to them is just another way to keep a brand active. Mm-hmm. So potentially they could. And maybe we know. I mean, aside from Star Trek Online, they also licensed out to Infinite Space. Right. For, yeah. So they clearly want the online space to exist. And I agree. For Star and Trek. I think their st- their st- their strategy is to make licensing fees off them, not to uh, buy a studio and take on the burden of development and, right. and financing that. But maybe some money. Mm-hmm. Maybe I don't know. It seems like they want money, not that they want to give money. Now a lot of there's actually been rumors flying about. I don't know if there's any merit to any of these <laughs> rumors, but people have been noticing that BioWare might be interested. Blizzard has uh, apparently made some sort of offhanded statement about the success of Champions Free to Play and stuff mm. like that. So I don't know. I don't see another video game publisher picking them up. I think that CBS is the most likely candidate. I, but I, don't, I don't mean to beat on this horse, but I think the Foundry technology is uh, a very compelling piece of tech that. On a, on a when you're looking at a spec sheet of a studio to buy and their games, mm-hmm. boy, if I if I was a certain studio and I wanted to add that technology to my series of games, maybe I would look at I don't know. It's probably so heavily tied to the Cryptic engine that it might not be possible. But it's definitely it's an interesting point, thing though. to shake out. Now, Cryptic isn't really saying anything. We've we've requested that when they can, they come on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have been kind of paying attention to some of the language, like in the latest latest engineering report, Dan Stahl specifically called out uh, and made props to the leadership of Jack and of Craig, which mm-hmm. is interesting because that came out before the whole news story. Within hours, but yes. <laughs> um, but I, I remember thinking when they... There was, a, there was a term that they had been working on many strategic partnerships to yeah. ensure the f- continued development of the title. Right, or something like and that. I remember thinking when, uh, when they said that Craig was coming on board and that Craig was going to manage the operations side and the money side of things, I thought, they really sound like that is... I, and I thought at that point, I thought, boy, they must really have a separate culture from Atari where they're almost just autonomous. You know, let me take that one step further because I kind of... And maybe this is just me being paranoid, but I think this has been, actually been in the work for a while. We saw just a, several months ago, um, the previous CEO left the company. He might have seen this coming and didn't want to be a part of this potential rocky period. Maybe. As well as Bill Roper recently left Champions Online. Maybe. Man, so no, it's, it's, it's reaching. But one thing I will say is... The language they use in the Atari financial report is it is in progress. It's already underway. Mm-hmm. The divestment is in process, and that's already something they're doing. So that does sound like it, maybe they're maybe they've maybe they've been talking for a while and say, okay, guys, you need to start structuring for this. Mm-hmm. And so they brought in you know these things, and who knows? I mean, wouldn't that be interesting? Maybe we'll find out all the details in the future. We'll get one of them on and tell us what's actually going on. Yeah, it's definitely something to keep your eyes on. Yeah. Now, any other thoughts on this guy? No, I think, I mean, it's it's a brand new story yeah. with very little information available. We just kind of need to sit tight and see how it's going to play out. Yeah, leave us your comments wherever you're watching this or send them over to stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com and let us know what you think and mm-hmm. what you think it means for the game. I'd be curious to know if you think it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm sure it's a good thing. Yeah? Yeah. Should we, well, we'll put up a poll. You know what I'm going to do? We'll put a poll. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Yes or no? And that's it. And we're just going to leave it at that, and you vote. And then Commit, we'll, people. And we'll show that in the next community <laughs> feedback segment. All right. Uh, but before we do all that, J-Man, let's go do Tactical View. And welcome to Tactical View. Now, we jumped over on the Tribble Test server and took a shot at a couple of new remastered episodes. Mm-hmm. And uh, they'll be landing on production on Thursday the 26th. Yeah, about probably two days from now if you're watching yeah. the release version. So uh, two of them came out. Uh, the first mm-hmm. one we're going to do is the uh, new remastered Pajem mission. Yeah, Diplomatic Orders. This yeah. was, if you recall previously, this is where you picked up the ambassador from Earth Space Dock and took him over to, to Pajem. Mm-hmm. Well, now they've, first, first of all, they put him on Vulcan. 
where ambassadors to the Vulcan Empire belong. Yeah, that makes sense. But, you know, along the way, they actually changed some things. They uh, First of all, Vulcan has a space station now. Kind of a like a maybe it's like an old space station or something. It's, it's a little a, derelict. It looks a little, like I, I made the comment. It looks like something the Ferengi would put together. It's a Vulcan function over form, I think, station. Okay. But hey, it's neat and it's there in space now. They also revamped the whole social area on the ground as well. It looks slightly more um, primal. Is the first word that came to mind. Yeah, and they really drive it home because uh, just to jump ahead a little bit, you uh, do a shuttle fly in that oh, just looks yeah. so slick and fly over the whole area. Really kind of show off. How purdy it all Vulcan mm -hmm. is now. And when you go down to pick up the ambassador, you get a note that says that he doesn't trust transporter technology, <laughs> so you have to go and pick him up in your shuttle. I wonder if that's because that would reveal a little something something. It's possibly. Now, this whole mission is laden with a whole lot of, uh, I guess you could call it foreshadowing, foreshadowing but yeah. a little bit of, it's kind of heavy-handed some points. It's fun. Especially the fact that you pick up an ambassador who ends up being kind of a jerk. It feels like a bit of a wink that uh, they know at this point that we know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's a I wink. It's okay, though. I didn't mind it. No, I didn't really either. And but yes, the the shuttle landing on Vulcan was awesome. Mm -hmm. and, and plus, then, your shuttle there as you're running around is a nice little touch too. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. And then you go pick him up and you lead him back to the shuttle and you take off and you're back in your shuttle interior. Yeah, we get a shot of the shuttle interior twice in this mission and which is so great looking. Hot. It really looks great. The the only problem I have with it is it's bigger than the shuttle. I mean, it's kind of a a TARDIS. I don't <laughs> know. It's it's big, but it, I don't think. Do you think it's bigger than it looks in the show? Uh, no, but the right. shuttle on the planet was smaller than that <laughs> interior. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. That's true. But, you know, you just... Uh, yeah. I'll go with it. Yeah, it's exactly. not It's not really that distracting. I think that happens a lot in the show, too, to be honest with you. you probably, yeah. yeah. Um, now, uh, what about the fact that when you do get to Pajem, it's got some... Uh, it's been cleaned up a little bit. Like, the, there's not as much of a dog pile combat situation, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you get some new voiceovers. Yeah. Which it looks I, like. The addition of the voiceovers and the few little cut scenes that they've added to this uh, particular mission... Um, when you play through it the first time in the previous version, it was kind of confusing what exactly was going on with the shape-shifting yeah, ambassador. You, yeah, if you didn't read the whole dialogue, you didn't quite catch that he was not mm -hmm. actually a Vulcan. Well, and some of the dialogue was just a little balloon pop-up on the screen. It wasn't an actual oh. like dialogue. dialogue. Oh. Oh, so it was okay. easy to miss if you were looking the oh. wrong direction. Well, now with the addition of the cutscenes, you very specifically see exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. You're caught up with the story, mm -hmm. and it, it just it plays out really well. Yep, yep. I, yeah. I liked uh, I liked that I liked the way they cleaned it up. I, I'm like you said. I, I thought they, it was much clearer what was going on. And then, uh, do you want to talk about the reward? Absolutely. You get a little pocket Spock. <laughs> pocket Spock. <laughs> you get to carry around Leonard Nimoy in your pocket and make yeah. him talk whenever you want. Yeah. It's like you, you pull his string. Yeah. <laughs> reach for the sky. It's a, a Woody <laughs> reference. Uh, yeah, it's neat because you get to basically listen to all of the. Uh, voiceovers that Leonard Nimoy recorded for the different sector introductions. It's great. Added value for those things. Very Otherwise, nice. you only get to hear them once. Yeah, yeah. In I, fact, I already found one that I don't think I ever heard before. I'm not sure why. I've missed... I, I was telling you, you were kind of scoffing at me before, but I've missed a couple of them for various reasons, yeah. and the Gamma Orionis one was one of them. That was the one you missed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, can we talk about Doomsday Device? Yes. Now, Doomsday Device was probably the one that I would say out of the two stood out the strongest to me. Um, well, yes. A lot the, the of The complete changes. mission... From top to bottom, has it's, been totally reimagined. It's a new mission, and it's it's amazing. It okay, where to start? Uh, I got to think through this. I guess uh, one thing to go through is uh, they changed the whole uh, the whole the whole thing to the fact that uh, you end up as a Klingon and as with a uh, holographic overlay, and you end up in a Klingon fighter, which is awesome. But just a quick note: you do have to reset your power bar. Yeah, you you take yeah. over a Burrell at one yeah. point. You take over the ship, and you become. A Burrell. And it's not just uh, like the holographic things we've had in the other missions no, or anything. You're actually on a new ship, which means resetting all your hot bars. Which, which is, uh, the reason you do it is clever, it's fun, it's awesome, mm -hmm. and, and then you end up later on in the, in the combat. It is clearly much easier to do in a Klingon Bird of Prey than it would be in my ship anyways because of, I need to be able to turn and get out of there. Well, yeah, it's still uh, up going up against the Doomsday device at the end, which mm -hmm. is still the same way as it was before. you got to shoot it in the mouth. Mm -hmm. The doomsday device itself seems to turn a little faster though now and, and shoot more frequently. Yeah, shoot more frequently. Yeah. So you have to be able to get in and fire and get back out before yeah. you become space debris. And you don't want to miss, so you want to get up in that thing, and which is what mm -hmm. I did. But that's all awesome and in its own right, completely amazing. But what was truly groundbreaking in this new remastered episode was something that I believe is precedent setting, and 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 was something I hope to see in all of the future episodes is when you're in space, there are cutscenes back to you in your bridge chair giving orders in that Klingon ship mm -hmm. and then back to space. Cutscenes between space. With no zoning. Or no anything. zoning. It's just boom, boom. Very clever work. This is something that we had been told not even two months ago was not 
possible. I know, I know, I don't know if it was Gozer or who it was that busted out the tricks for this. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. If you were watching the live stream, I was giddy like a little girl when I saw what a boss I was being. <laughs> yeah. And the first time it does it, the first time you cut from space to inside, it's this awesome zoom past your shoulder reveal. And then very, very cool. And then also later on in the mission, you, you hail back to Starfleet, and which makes sense because you're not far in the Sirius Sector block mm -hmm. from Starfleet. You hail back to Starfleet. And it's not just a pop-up window. No, you actually see Admiral Quinn in his office looking at the tactical map, giving orders. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. And then I gave orders to people, and that was all done with cutscenes. Yeah. Uh, fun to be in a Klingon ship, and it was fun to use that special weapon. Oh, God. And when the first time that the Doomsday device is revealed... First of all, you, there's another little cut scene and you, you fly into here in your Burrell and you're like, okay, it's time to take on the doomsday. Yeah. And it turns and blows the crap out of a planet. Yes. Yes. Oh my God. An amazing effect. And then this planet just sits there and it's actually, it's behind us right now. It just sits <laughs> there and disintegrates and burns and just like, like you just see things burning off of it. Um, and then, you know, that new, that new torpedo, which also ends up as a reward mm -hmm. is kind of a, I, I don't know, harping. I don't know how you, I think that's close. I'm, I'm playing off harpoon. Like it's a big, yeah, whale. that's close enough. Um, now the old one, some people liked because it had a 360 degree firing arc mm. and that was kind of handy as a torpedo. Mm. This new one's kind of neat though. It's a 90 degree, so it's, it's tighter. Um, but when you fire it at somebody, it hits them just like a, like a photon torpedo and then debuffs them. And if they don't get healed of that debuff, they yeah. take a secondary explosion yeah, it's as got well. Like, it's got like a harping radiation damage or something mm -hmm. they call it. Uh, but all of that aside, the part that I had just sitting here, I was tapping my foot, pounding the table is there's a moment where, you know, you're getting all swept up as being a Klingon and whatnot. And there's this, if you've seen, uh, the original, uh, Star Trek episode, where they take on the doomsday device, one of the captains who's kind of lost his mind sort of sacrifices himself in an attempt to blow up the doomsday device. Mm -hmm. And while his attempt is that's futile... That's Captain Decker, right? Yeah, that's Captain yeah. Decker. And his, while his attempt is futile, it's, you know, they're able to figure out, well, hey, that did enough damage. There's sort of an homage to that where there's uh, a moment where a, a Klingon jumps in a shuttle and it's a cutscene, and he's on the bridge of his shuttle and then he flies off and he's singing and it's... He's it's, singing a war chant as he flies into the mouth of the doomsday device. It's epic. It's it's entertaining. It is Star Trek entertainment, and it's awesome. And you know what? I, that actually segues to one more thing. The voiceovers in this, uh, it, Cryptic in the past has had a tendency to over dramatize their Klingon voiceovers, like in some of the trailers that we've seen and stuff like that. It sounds really cheesy. Well, it sounds like the Klingons really trying. Right. He's like really trying hard to be yeah. a Klingon. Well, yeah. the guys that were doing the voiceovers for this, I, they just are Klingons. Yeah, it was fun. I just don't. They didn't have to try. They were just here's my Klingon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other thoughts on that guy? Uh, it's worth it. Yeah, oh yeah. It's totally worth it. Yeah, I mean, you might want to wait till Thursday. That way, you get the the uh, you know the reward on your actual production character, mm -hmm. which I'm. That's what I'm intending to replay. I enjoyed it so much. I'm going to replay it as a, as solo. I did this one as a group, and I'm going to try to solo. But it worked as a group. Mm -hmm. And there's uh there's now career specific um objectives on the ground right. that you run around on the quite with a, career specific accolades as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, quite a bit of quite a bit of new stuff all over this mission. I just I can't talk about it enough. So mm -hmm. go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. All right, J-Man. Well, let's jump over to community feedback. Now this brings us to community feedback. Now last week we asked you to send in questions about the dude about the God, are, can you just get it out? About the duty officers. It's off. We'll just, about, okay. It's doffs. Right. Uh, cause we're going to have heretic on the, on the show, but he can't join us yet because he's got to get clearance to share all the yeah, details. It's all really hush hush still. Yeah. So, so since we're going to be scheduling that a little further out, we thought mm -hmm. we'd also expand the question because we want to also get some questions from you about the ground combat system. Mm -hmm. Around the same time we have Heretic on, we're also going to have Al Rivera back, Captain Gecko, and he'll be answering all of our questions about ground combat. So in order, in preparation for that, we'd like to know what you want to know. Yeah. So now we're asking you two things, really. Uh, first up, what would you like to know about the duty officer system? Mm -hmm. And then second up, what would you like to know about ground combat? 
and send those into stoked at jupiterbroadcasting.com and then we'll go through we'll pick out some of the best and we'll throw them in their faces mm -hmm. right in fact i got to tell you right up front having a prearranged set of questions that we can ask them might be make them able to appear even sooner so oh, okay. get them in as quickly as you can all right nice now before we wrap up we thought maybe we'd give you a few foundry missions yeah sure now of course cryptic is uh, is highlighting one of them called sins of the sun sins of the sun by netherblood yep. and this is a kdf mission so go check that out definitely now we've got three more that came directly from the chat room i i haven't gotten to try these Highly out regarded yet. from the chat room yes all of these received at least one five star rating from somebody in the chat room most of them were like oh yeah that is a good one as soon as it came up so here they are brains before bounty <laughs> Ice Station Gamma. Ooh. And To Free or Not To Free. I like all those names. These are all Federation missions. I'm going to check them out. Yeah. All right, so there you go. And, of course, they uh, if you missed the name, it's in the show notes as mm -hmm. well. Now, before we go, we want to tell you about a new show that we've launched. It just hit its second episode over at jupiterbroadcasting.com starring... J-Man! I'm famous! Yeah, there's a new show, Morg, or The Morg, depending on how it's easier to say, mm -hmm. is what? It's like intense analysis of the MMO industry. Yeah. Like the big sweeping changes. It's an editorial-only show. It's all just my opinions, but it covers basically all the big news that's going to have an impact on the, the MMO industry as a whole. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk, be talking about all the individual little press releases that come across, no new patch notes and junk like that, but big features. Yeah. Uh, like let's, in this most recent episode, I talked about uh, Age of Empires Online, which yeah. is going to be launching an entire new subgenre of mm -hmm. MMORTS, mm -hmm. and APB Reloaded, because, well... Which is a fascinating story. I think you're going to just have to check out the episode yeah. to learn. The, the APB Reloaded stuff is probably one of the most unique things that's happened to an MMO. Well, it could be precedent-setting if yeah, everything uh, totally. goes the way they want it. Totally. So check out the morgue, and you can find that over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And also, we welcome you to join us live over at jblive.tv at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, check out our Facebook page over at facebook.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting. That's where you'll find out information about new releases when we go live and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for joining us in this week's episode of Stoked, and we'll see you next Tuesday. handy to have that chat room. Oh, that's not the right button. We've just changed location. It's handy to have that transphasic transporter where you <laughs> can teleport across the galaxy. Uh, all right. What are you doing with your hands there? Being fancy. Yeah. What do you call it? <laughs> <laughs>